What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing exploring Warhammer 40k, creating a space marine. Continuing with the exploring series, this channel is really good, we've done part 1. And this is the second thing, creating a space marine. This was actually a requested video separately as well. And people wanted me to know how they were made, considering I asked, so this should be very interesting. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new of course. Uh, regarding the Emperor Text to Speak ser series, which is the most requested thing on the channel, like I say in most videos, we're going to do some more lore videos and then we'll start on that. So I can understand all the jokes and stuff. But without further ado, we're going to get into this video. Be sure to subscribe and all that. Creating a Space Marine Super soldiers are not an uncommon concept in fiction. From Captain America to Master Chief, Mm. and represent a potential future reality as well. There's super soldiers in everything. There really is. And yeah, he's right. We could we could make uh, super soldiers probably in the near future. If not right now. Not legally right now, probably. But you could definitely make some kind of super soldiers in the future. Augmented by genetic engineering, cybernetic enhancements, potent drug cocktails, or even more supernatural means, super soldiers are meant to be stronger, faster, and smarter than the average soldier. Space Marines in Warhammer 40,000, officially called the Adeptus Astartes, are easily among the most capable of fictional super soldiers. Each Space Marine is worth hundreds if not thousands of normal men and are the greatest living weapons available to the Imperium of Man. This video will focus specifically on the process of converting a normal man into a Space Marine, including both the implant process as well as their equipment. The recruitment process for Space Marines starts fairly young, generally between 10 and 16, due to the way the implants function, and additionally, recruits must be male for the same reason. Recruits are often taken from worlds with harsh conditions, or th So you can't be female and be a Space Marine. That's a bit unlucky, isn't it? And you have to be between 10 and 16. Okay. Those with tribal populations lacking technology, Hive worlds, with massive, dirty, dangerous cities, also make prime grounds for finding recruits. Potential recruits are generally selected due to their aptitude for violence, aggression, and killing instincts. Some Space Marine chapters only take recruits from a single planet, or group of planets, while others scour the galaxy to find them. Once potential recruits are selected, they usually are put through a trial in order to determine which, if any of them, are capable of becoming- He said uh, violent tendencies and stuff like that. Between 10 and 16? You can tell he's violent? What are you doing? Are you just beating up kids at school or something? I mean, Space Marines. These trials vary wildly from world to world and chapter to chapter. Some trials are built into a civilization's culture, while others are specifically introduced by a Space Marine chapter. Often, the participants of a trial won't even be aware that the reward is a place among the Space Marines, or sometimes not even know what a Space Marine is. These trials are almost always extremely difficult, and a participant is fortunate to even survive them. These trials take the form of duels to the death, hunting a predator, including other humans, beasts, or aliens, wiping out rival tribes or gangs, or prolonged survival in an extremely harsh environment. Some chapters even have aspirants compete against a space marine, oh. measuring his degree of failure. You have to fight one of them between the ages of 10 and 16 with no upgrades? In the armor? Oh nah, I'm, I'm good, I'll get clapped. Everyone will get clapped. Assuming he survives. If the recruit is biologically and mentally prepared at this point for the initiation process, he is then taken to a chapter's fortress monastery to begin training, conditioning, and the implant process. A standard Space Marine receives 19 distinct implants into their bodies, each designed to enhance their combat and survival potential. These implants are created through the use of 19 different gene seeds, genetic material created by the Emperor of Mankind that is capable of developing into the organs, either in vitro or within the initiate's body directly. The Imperium no longer knows how to engineer new gene seed, and so germ cells are often taken from a specific implant in each space marine so that they can be used to create more implants. The implant process is both highly dangerous to an individual as well as highly painful, as most of the implants require the subject to be awake and their minds not dulled by painkillers. The first implant is a secondary heart, which increases blood supply and pumping capacity, 
and allows the Space Marine to survive should their primary heart fail. This also allows them to function normally in a low oxygen environment. The second affects a Space Marine's bones, allowing them to absorb specific chemicals laced in their diet, drastically increasing the size and strength of their skeleton and fusing their ribcage into a solid bone plate. The third is introduced at the same time in order to vastly increase their muscular growth as well as regulate their hormonal changes from the many implants. The fourth alters a space marine's blood to make it far more efficient in carrying oxygen and nutrients. And the fifth creates new cells that function as super platelets, causing blood to clot much faster and more effectively forming scar tissue in seconds. The sixth, implanted in the cerebrum, bypasses the normal human need for sleep, allowing a space marine to shut down half of their brain while the other half remains functional. You can sleep half your brain at a time? Raw. I mean, that doesn't really make full sense, to be honest. There is that uh, weird um, disease thing where they, you know, they can cut the, ner the ner nerves of between your brain, two sides of the brain, and they kind of function separately, so I guess that would happen. Actually, you have the mirror on still. So. A squad of Space Marines is on record for being on active combat duty for 328 hours straight, thanks to this implant. The seventh functions as a pre- 328 hours straight. Oh, whoa, whoa. How, how many days is that? 13.6 days! 13.7 days! What the hell? His ...stomach above the normal stomach, where it isolates inedible substances, as well as ingested poisons and toxins. The eighth hooks into the central nervous system, and allows a space marine to consume a creature's flesh, and gain some of its memories. Whoa! Some what mutations hell? in this implant's gene seed have led a few chapters to develop a craving for blood or flesh. The ninth is a third lung that allows a space marine to breathe in extremely low oxygen environments, toxic environments, or even underwater, pulling oxygen directly from the water. The tenth modifies their eyesight, making it far superior to an average human, and allowing that. them to see in low light conditions as if they were in daylight. The eleventh replaces their ear, enabling them to filter out certain sounds protects them from certain sonic attacks, and makes them immune to dizziness and motion sickness. The twelfth allows a space marine to essentially enter a state of suspended animation, either on purpose or as a result of extreme trauma. This can keep a mortally wounded space marine alive for years until they are properly revived, and the record stands at 567 years. A man was, was mortally wounded, so he put himself into a state of unconsciousness i guess and they found him and revived him that's mad that's crazy the 13th affects a space marine's skin making it more resistant to radiation heat and high levels of sunlight mm -hmm. the 14th regulates a space marine's circulatory system and organs and is also capable of detoxifying their body very quickly although this process renders the space marine unconscious as it quickly circulates their blood. The 15th enhances their senses of taste and smell, allowing them to easily determine the chemical composition of a substance by simply tasting or smelling it. Wow. It also allows them to track a target by taste alone. That's crazy. The 16th does nothing on its own, but when a specific chemical treat that what lot 15 makes sense now, because when uh, someone said they could smell blood in the Hells Re series, it's like, what? Well, now it makes sense. Treatment is applied to a space marine's skin, they begin secreting a waxy protein substance that seals their skin, much like a cocoon. This process allows them to survive extremely harsh environments, up to and including the vacuum of space. The 17th is among the most unusual, and has in fact atrophied in a number of space marine chapters. It allows a space marine to actively transform their saliva into a corrosive, blinding acid. What? <laughs> this lets them chew through iron bars, digest crazy, substances man. that would otherwise be impossible, and blind their opponents. That's crazy. The 18th reproduces the gene seed capable of creating new implants, and its contents have to be collected by an apothecary after a certain number of years. Finally, the 19th implant is implanted directly underneath the skin of the torso, sending invasive neural bundles into their bodies. This allows for a direct connection between a space marine's nervous system 
and their power armor through a number of connection points in their skin. Although power armor does not require this implant to function, it makes it far more capable, acting more akin to a second skin for the Space Marine. It also allows them to directly interface with Space Marine vehicles. More recently, new developments in gene seed technology have led to the creation of Primaris Space Marines, who possess three additional implants. One greatly enhances their strength, even compared to a normal Space Marine. Another makes them even closer to a Primarch in physical size and capabilities. And a third expels a self-synthesized chemical into their bodies that functions as a combat stimulant, as well as aiding in the rapid regrowth of tissue, bone, and muscle. Mm -hmm. While the implant process is going on, initiates undergo extremely rigorous conditioning including chemical treatments, hypnotherapy, mental indoctrination, and of course, physical training. This conditioning serves to hone the initiate into a finely tuned weapon, capable of focusing his senses to an extreme degree, enduring pain that would kill a normal man, increasing their reaction speeds and response times, and enhancing their memory capabilities sometimes leading to photographic memories. This conditioning also serves to reinforce the initiate's respect for authority and resistance to the temptations of chaos. At a certain point, these initiates will be placed into a squad of Space Marine Scouts, lightly armed and armored recon troops that are more than human, but less than a full Space Marine. Space Marine Scouts rely more on stealth, going ahead of a proper Space Marine squad to gather intelligence destroy strategic targets, and capture or assassinate enemy commanders. This field training allows the initiate to function as part of a squad of their brethren, and really learn what it is to be part of the Space Marine. Once an initiate is given the final implant, the Black Carapace, they are ready to become a full-fledged Space Marine. Every chapter of Space Marines is different, so we'll save discussions about the ranks, roles, and operations of a Space Marine for the specific videos on different chapters. Instead, let's finish by going over the standard equipment that most Space Marines are likely to utilize. First is their iconic power armor. Space Marine power armor is a fully enclosed, full body suit of heavy armor, composed of thick ceramite plates designed to protect the Space Marine from both weapons and environments, and also contains a number of auxiliary systems to assist them. Standard power armor is impossible for a normal human to function in, although there are lesser suits made for non-Space Marines. A number of different models and variations have been made to power armor, but generally the suits enhance the already considerable strength and durability of a Space Marine, and through the connection to the Marine's black carapace implant, function as practically an extension of their bodies. The helmets contain advanced communication equipment and automatic targeting systems, infrared and ultraviolet lenses, and an internal oxygen supply. Other accessories include gyroscopic stabilizers, temperature regulators, nutrient reservoirs, and a biomonitor capable of automatically dispensing painkillers and combat stimulants into a Space Marine's body. Even larger power armor models are used as well, including the Terminator armor, the Centurion armor, and the mighty Dreadnought armor. Dreadnought. As for weapons, as you might expect for some of the toughest warriors in the Warhammer 40k universe, the Space Marines boast a formidable arsenal. The most ubiquitous weapon available to Space Marines is the Bolter, which itself comes in a huge amount of varieties. A Bolter is a powerful assault weapon that fires explosive rounds, commonly called bolts. Much like the standard power armor, a standard Bolter would be practically unusable in an average human's hands and its bolt rounds are capable of ripping through or blowing apart a foe. Heavy bolters are also used, with a high rate of fire capable of chewing through enemy ranks, as well as bolt pistols, a lighter sidearm that is usable by normal humans. Do uh, space marines ever just fight each other? Like, just, I'm sure they do, they have disagreements and they fight. That's crazy man, this video is actually really informative. This, this channel is amazing. Another iconic weapon of Space Marines, although certainly not limited to them, is the Chainsword. Essentially a one-handed chainsaw in the shape of a sword. Chainswords are capable of tearing through flesh, bone, and metal, emitting high-pitched buzzing sounds as it does so. 
Death by a chainsword is bloody, painful, loud, and effective. Countless other pieces of gear, armor, and weaponry have been used by Space Marine forces throughout the years, as well as by Chaos Space Marines, and it would be pointless to try and go over all of it here. Space Marines are very much the face of Warhammer 40k, mm. being strong, resilient, resolute, and unabashed angels of death. Despite being a familiar concept, they represent much of what makes 40k what it is. Endless warriors fighting an endless battle. They are certainly over the top, capable of chewing through metal, shrugging off bullet wounds, and tearing through aliens with a chainsword, but that's a big part of what makes 40k fun. In the future, I'll go over more specific examples of Space Marine chapters and their conduct, but it's good to understand what it takes to make a man into a Space Marine. This guy's series is really, really good if we're getting into it. We should have started with this, to be honest, and that would have really helped me and everything else. But this is great. Now I know how Space Marines are made. The one thing that's crazy is that saliva thing with the acid. That's just stupid. I'm sorry. That's that's too much. But like you said, that's what makes this universe so fun for people. But anyway, man, if you made it to the end, thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you all next time.